This is the, accept the acceptable time. We thank you for all that has gone before. And as we bring this conference to a close in the next 10 minutes or so, God. Whatever is outstanding, we say you have license. Amen. You have room. You yes. have an open check. You yes. have a black slate. You have the dominion and the throne and the excellency. And we ask you, oh God, to perfect what you have started Amen. in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody put your hands together for God. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Congrats to God. Congrats to God. Amen. I don't. Can, if someone could get me a glass of water, that'd be great. I don't know who's had that. Amen. Good to see you guys. I was there at the very first God's Girls. Thank you. Uh, this is good for me. Amen. Amen. It's anointed water. Amen. By the way, for those of you who missed last night, you missed. Amen. Um, you know, you just absolutely missed. Amen. Uh, I was telling somebody recently, and I don't, I don't hand out flattery lightly. Uh, I don't. I'm not a fool. The Bible says flatterers are fools, and those who receive flattery. Are fools as well. And I don't like being called a fool. Amen. Anybody here like being referred to as a fool? Okay. Um, so I don't flatter. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. And I told the person, I said, my favorite preacher in the world is a man called Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Amen. Amen. And my second favorite preacher in the world is my wife. Okay. I mean it. I'm, I'm just, I'm just I mean it. And, and it wasn't always that way. Amen. It wasn't always that way. But uh, she, she's something, isn't she? Yeah. Amen. She's something. You guys were very lucky to have her last night. Amen. Yeah. And for those of you who missed, they'll come back next year. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And to all the other wonderful women around, you know, uh, mothers, elders, sisters, sisters, baby sisters, daughters, God bless all of you. Amen. Can we put our hands together? Thank you very much.
you know, and, and, and one of the reasons is there's a lot more process. You know, I've got two wonderful boys, the, the most handsome young men in the world. I made up my mind, if they marry a Zimbabwean girl, they will not pay Labola. She will pay them. Amen. That's how, and I mean, come on now, look at them. Amen. I'm just joking. I mean, if she's all that, then we can call it square and everybody just goes, you know. You know, but, 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 amen. Just, just joking. But, but no matter how much I love my sons, I'm not going to give them the keys to my car. You know why? Because we're not ready. And no amount of praying and fasting, no amount of binding and loosing will get the government to give you a license at four. But if you are 24, don't go complaining how the devil doesn't want me to drive, you know? The devil is holding No, you don't want you to drive, amen. Does that make sense? There comes a season in your life, especially if you're like me, who's had to do things a long way. Some people do what I do. People have a shortcut kind of life. And I bless God for you. You push a button and opens. You, you breathe out a door and just swings wide. Anybody like that? You know, just, and, and they boast about it. They say things like, I don't know why, but things just work for me. And, then, and the rest of us are like, and you wonder why they're jealous in the house of the Lord, amen. And every time I go to the pastor, just, 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 just likes me, you know? I've been here 15 years and the pastor hasn't noticed me. You know, but, but, but anybody like that, lift up your hands, and you are the kind of person who, for whom you are what I call a point of reference. You're a textbook being written. You are called and ordained by God to chart a part in life that not many have walked, and therefore God can't take you a shortcut. You've got to go the long way around because there's lessons wow. and principles you need to not just learn, but imbibe wow. so that you can become a reference point for the entire generation. Anybody like that? You mess up, God gives it to you double. You drive without insurance, you get caught. Come on now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, God just doesn't let you get away with anything. Because he's writing a reference text through your life. And the Bible says you are an epistle. Being written. Not with human hands and not on paper and ink. But on the heart when you talk to me. And, and there are seasons where God just puts you on a back burner, just walks away. Anybody be like, it's been like People come to you and you know, you're the intercessor of your church. You know? And, and I, you know, when you gather a bunch of women together, it's not, it's not prophetic to understand that some people will be hashtag intercessors. Talk to me, right? Because women usually don't have an ego like we guys. We don't, you don't need to be at the front line, do you? You understand that not everybody can be behind a pulpit. Not everybody can be the face of the flyer. And you guys are excellent at being able to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. And so you wake up at night, 1 a.m. in the morning, praying, God, please move at my church tomorrow. And that have big pastor, you know, like some of us get on the pulpit and we think, oh, Lord, I'm. But when, when you are that kind of person, and God just seems to not necessarily have your time. For years and years and years, but then people come to you and you pray and bang. You know I'm talking to one person. Just one. Bang. You know, you, you, you serve something, bang. You try something, bang. And you can get so used to it that like the woman who, again, and, and, and just address this. Every time you see a woman in the Bible, one of the first metaphors you should think about is the body of Christ. You guys are so special to God that he chose you as a metaphor for his pride. You are the crown of creation. You are the last thing made. Creation is a pyramid. Order, day one, two, three. The ocean animals, day four. Then the land animals and plants, day five. And, and, and that's the, the that, if you look at evolution, according to the scientists, that's the order. They just think it took billions of years. We know it took six days. But it's the exact same order of evolution. So in code, you are the most evolved species on the planet. Hello. Hello. Can I repeat? You are the most evolved species on the planet. That's why you're the most misunderstood. We don't get you. Honestly, we don't. And the wise ones amongst us just know that we don't. And we, right? We don't, we don't get you because you guys are, and I'm, I'm not being joking, I'm, I'm serious. There are things that go on on the inside of your psyche and your soul that go beyond normal English and French can convey. Because I'm not 
I'm joking. I'm serious. Hear me, hear me. Because there is an internal spiritual agitation going on in your spirit that is prophetically linked to the balance of creation and the will of God. And what that thing does is cause fractures in your soul. Such that when the time comes where God has stepped aside, you haven't. Like the woman who tells Elisha, man of God, I'm cool not having a child. It's my lot in life. I'm about 50 now. I've dealt with it. I've probably adopted one or two children. Can we not go there? Anybody like that? Where, where, where that scar has become such a part of your makeup that it's normal and you are almost afraid to let it go. Talk to me, talk to me. Amen. If you've been on benefits your whole life, the thought of not being able to sign in will terrify you. Even if there's a job offer offering 40 grand a year, the security that comes from signing in for that hundred or something, who knows what I'm talking about? Where your pain becomes such a oh, I shouldn't shout, I shouldn't shout. Becomes such a part of you that you, 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 you're just like, you know, can, can we just be? Can we just be? I know to someone. Yes. And, 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 and when the time comes where God finally says, I'm done oh, with you, you don't feel like you're done with yourself. When God says, it's no longer me, I'm not responsible for the delay any longer. Does that make sense? The fullness of time has come. The iniquity of the Amorites has been completed. 430 years in slavery has been fulfilled. 70 years in Babylonian captivity have been accomplished. And God's like, don't look at me anymore. Some of you, God is saying, don't look at me anymore. The whole idea of, well, God's just slowing me down. No longer a factor. You know, God, no, you see, look at your neighbors. It's not God anymore. It's not God any longer. It's not God any longer. It's not God any longer. God is done with you in that sense. Now you need to be done with yourself. Genesis chapter 1, right quickly as we pray. Verse, let's start from 26. Talking about the glory, the Amplified says, God said, let us, in bracket, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind, not male man, mankind. The Hebrew word literally means amaphrodite. It literally means genderless. Are you with me? Okay, look at James say, we were all in this at the beginning. Amen. So men need to understand that, amen, that when God blessed mankind, woman was in there, amen. There's no God given, okay, I don't want to start a fight over here. Amen. In our image, someone say image. image. In our likeness. Likeness. Now, the word image means from the same material. So, a wooden chair is in the image of a tree. It might not look like a tree, but it's made from the same composite material. And a plastic Christmas tree is in the likeness of the real tree. It's made from a different material, but it, it's organized physically like. And God said, when I made mankind, I made sure both the component was the same and also both the manifestation was the same. Does that make sense? So you and God are cut from the same cloth. Literally, it is not heresy. You've got to believe that. Amen. He's God and you are not, but he chose himself as the rock. I need you to understand that, ladies. You are from the same raw material as God. And if you understood that, there's some things you wouldn't stand. Because God wouldn't allow his bra be pulled down the parking lot now. Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me. Would he? No. You're from the same material as God. Same structure. Same, same everything. And in verse 27, he says, So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him, colon or semicolon, male and female, he created them. Aha. Shut the Bible. So, God is literally saying that there is a dimension to my image that only a man can reveal. Does that make sense? There is a part of God that is revealed through the human, the male subspecies. The aggression, the strength, the drive. The, the seeming insatiable desire for accomplishment. You know, many women just don't understand why your husband just seems to have this necessity to do stuff. Who knows what I'm talking about? I can think he's coming with six when walk is over. Amen. If he runs a business, why isn't he happy with just one business? Why is it going to be another and another and another? If he's a minister, why is it one? Because there's just something built into the human spirit, the male spirit, that is of God that needs activity. God made man outside of God and put him inside. The Bible says it. 
So God placed the man he made in the Garden of Eden, meaning he was outside. Mm. But the woman was made in the garden. So, so we guys aren't comfortable in order. Mm. And you can tell by the way we kick our socks and shoes off. Right? <laughs> we, we just don't like order, do we? You know, because we need to solve a problem. And so if there's no problem to solve, we get bored. So many times we create the problem, right? <laughs> right? Okay, we, we, we start the fight so we can bring the flowers. Who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> Amen. Come on now. So you understand that? You know, you, that the same with young boys. They, 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 just, they just need to spoil something. Amen. But, but we're not talking about men now. You know? We're talking, you know, one, according to the scientists, one evolutionary cycle removed from chimps. But we're talking about the crown of creation. There is a level of God's glory. And what glory? I don't have time to explain it's character, nature, uh, 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 composite material. It means weight, it means gravity. It simply means when you put something on a scale, its glory is what it weighs. So, so you put God on a scale, his glory is what it weighs. When Moses said, show me your glory, God didn't show him goosebumps. God spoke to him about his attributes. And they are attributes of God that are a woman's alone to unveil. For instance, when God talks about his nature, he says, can a mother forsake the children. He's drawing an analogy between the maternal connection between a, you know what I, you know what that connection is like. Even the other day when I throw my son up, my wife's like, I'm like, he's mine too. She's like, oh, you were in I'm like, I was there actually. You know, I was there. All like, different stories from different days. I, you know, I saw this Facebook picture of a father throwing a child up. The three pictures. It said Picture one, how the father sees it. The child was this high. Picture two, what is actually going on? The child was this high. Picture three, how the mother sees it. The child was like. And the Bible says that that image is how God treats his people. So if you want to know how God is as a parent, don't just look at the father who disciplines and brings correction. Look at the mother who would put her life on the line and stay there. That's your story. Mm. I could go on and on and give you examples. The multi-breasted one, El Shaddai. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. In fact, if you study Hebrew, if you study Hebrew, the words and pronouns you use for the Holy Spirit are all female, not male. Mm. You know, they're all female, not male. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. There's a reason. Wisdom is referred to as a she for a reason. And this is the principle throughout the Bible. Wherever the image of God exists, the enemy wants to attack it. It's a principle. That's the story of the Bible. But well, one of the stories of the Bible, it's the story of creation. Satan rebelled against the image of God in heaven, came down to the earth to war with the image of God, went to Calvary to fight the image of God, and is spending the rest of eternity being defeated by the image of God in you and I. It's all about the image of God. Now, I want to ask you a question. If you saw two species on the earth, one with this image of God, and the other one, like I said, with the more evolved, and I'm not joking when I say that, the foolish things of the world are used to confound the wise. God chooses the base thing. That's why he chose man to lead the home. Not because man was the better partner, but because man was the more foolish partner. I'm serious. I'm, I'm really, I'm not joking about that. Amen. No, the, the whole idea of a husband being ahead to his wife is not about attributes. It's about default. Wow. The truth is, the Trinity is God in three categories, and God chooses one category to lead the other two. But they're co equal. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Function doesn't always reveal qualification, for lack of a better word. Does that make sense? Yeah. So God endowed the male species with some traits that make us slightly better. Big picture. But it doesn't mean that at the core, because we were both there in verse 26 when God blessed. Are you with me? The blessing was given to man before the functions were separated out. The first time Satan attacked the image of God through man, who did he go through? It's been the same principle throughout the Bible. From the woman at the Garden of Eden to the woman, the body of Christ, amen. Someone talk to me? To the woman in the book of Revelation. 
Revelation in chapter 12. Yes. Because Satan understands that if he can crack the container of the glory, he can mar the picture of heaven. And that is why you guys get molested, why you get abused, why you get heartbroken, why the same idiot proposes to five guys in the same church at the same time. Come on, someone talk to me. Like Reverend Joy said, it ain't about you. It's about something bigger than you, which only you can reveal. And God suffers it to be so for a while. Like the woman at the world of Samaria, six husbands, five, one she wanted to get married to, five dispensations gone, one currently about to come, and one to come, amen. Raped in court throughout history. Does that make sense? Raped throughout history. Raped through the dispensations of God's dealings with man. Raped through the seasons of her life. Emotionally violated by circumstances. Somebody talk to me. Amen. At a place now where what was supposed to be a picture of God and his church in intimacy called sex had been so abused in her psyche, her identity so downtrodden that it was just like, who knows what I'm talking about? But life had And on that one day, the Bible says Jesus just had to go through Samaria. Wow. God said, enough's wow. enough. The gospel wasn't going to come in full till Acts when Philip came. But Jesus said, we've got to put a foundation in place. Something has to be stirred in the atmosphere. Something has to be sorted out. And it can only be done through a woman. So he goes to the well sends his disciples who are all men by the way so they don't mess it up amen with their questions and wanting to fix everything sends them away someone talk to me amen. and then sits down there violating protocol somebody here has been saying god when are you going to do something special for me god says honey i'm about to violate protocol for you. i'm going to do something in a way that is not normally done to prove to you that i care about you <coughs> one he's a jew she's a samaritan Wow. Two, he's a rabbi, she's a woman. And, and, and three, she's a woman, so he shouldn't be talking to her in the absence of a husband. Some men in the church would do well to lend that principle in. And, 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 and he begins to, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He begins to talk to her and begins to ask her questions. And he's drilling. He starts with water, dealing with the surface issues of her life. Because we men just get straight down to business, don't we? How are you doing? Pastor Ackerman, hi, oh, but women need a bit of, don't you? Mm. You don't just, you know, Amen. accept to the wrong people usually, who then tell you business all around. But, but, but come on, talk to me someone, you know, tell your best friend who you thought was your best friend to you realize you were the ex-friend. But but, <laughs> but, 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 Jesus understood that this woman's emotional balance was so fragile, that he couldn't just jump into it. So he started with the issues of the surface, what she was doing, water. And drilled, and drilled, and drilled, and drilled, and drilled, and drilled, and drilled till he hit the spot. Someone say, Lord, hit my spot tonight. Oh, Till he hit God. the spot. And when he hit that spot, she came undone in his presence. She said, I perceive you're a prophet. He said, I'm not letting go yet. We're not there yet. And he drew one level deeper. Until she left the water. Until she, you know. Some of the issues you're dealing with are just distractions. <laughs> See, they're just trying to keep you busy so you don't realize the deeper issues on the inside. Hallelujah. Come on now. The fact that that sister and the choir don't like you is Satan's way of keeping you busy. So you don't address the fact that the fact that you were abused as a child is wrecking your self-confidence. But we have a God who knows how to drill and drill and drill and drill till he hit the spot. Thank you. 
able to reveal by the attacks you go through. Hey! It's a clue in the mess. There's a pattern in the madness. There is there is method to the foolishness. Satan is not a wasteful strategist. There is a reason why you have been perpetually torn apart, misunderstood, abused, uh, uh, taken advantage of, even by other women. Your defense mechanisms are taken as proof of your flaw. There's a reason why you're abrasive. There's a reason why you're you're short-tempered. There's a there's a reason why you you are you are prickly. It's not because you want to be. Many times you go home and ask yourself, what's wrong with me? But there's something on the inside of you that is crying for attention. And usually just manifesting, you know. There's a reason why you keep getting attracted to abusive relationships. Deceptive. Uh, 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 affiliations. There's a reason why you keep making the same mistake over and over and over and over. Lift up your hands with me this evening. I want you to say, Lord, hit my spirit. Come on, pray. pray. Say, Lord, would you make me undone in your presence? I know we're going to finish in five minutes, but. But some of you after this need to go and talk to one of the ladies who are here today. If anybody preached anything that hits your heart, then maybe they're the one with your destiny. Then go and speak to them after and say, ma'am, this is what's really going on. Say, ma'am, this is what's really going on. This is behind. And even some of us, I mean, you know, even in ministry, we, we're good. Oh, my God. We pastors are the most horrible hypocrites, male and female. Sometimes ministry becomes a crutch. The anointing becomes a covering. It, it becomes a sense of identity that is masking something deep on the inside. That's why women usually stay at church later than men. Because there's just something about the presence of God that medicates the pain. You don't understand it, but, but when church is over sometimes, you don't want to go home. Because you realize once I step through that door, oh Lord have mercy, it's back to reality. Once I get back to that home, it's back to reality. Once I get back to that marriage, it's back to reality. Once I get back to those sick children, come on, who knows what I'm talking about? So you've been carrying water home every week. Carrying water home. A word for the week. A word for the month. A word for the year. An anointing to, but, but God says that to the woman of Samaria, I don't want to give you a glass of water today any longer. I want to give you wells. On the inside, I don't run dry. You can speak in tongues when we come. I'm going to speak in language. Right? Like we've heard, like the message I heard, 
there's someone with an investment in you that tops what you put into your own life. His name is the man at the well. We talk all the time about the woman at the well. No one talked about the man at the well. His name's Jesus. His name's Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the only man who can love you truly unconditionally. The only man you need to complete you. The only man who knows where your itch is, where your spot is, where your man in Kalabos, Kabahatari, and Dirimakitala. Pastor, I'm going to give you the mic now so I don't get responsible for what goes on after this, but before I give it back to you, I'm going to make an altar call and I'm going to give it to you to handle it as you want to handle it. Now, there are some women in this place today, and I can see and hear my spirit clearly. There is brokenness that goes beyond one offense you are dealing with. Your spirit has been contorted. Your soul has been convoluted by the trajectory of your life. For some of you, it's even affected your facial structure. It's affected your body posture. For some of you, it's manifested in medical circumstances that don't make sense. And, and it's beyond the point where you can enunciate it any longer. It's become so much a part of the background, you can't even give it a name, you can't even explain it at a coffee table. You just know you need something. Something to fix something broken. That's the best you can explain it. If that you just come to the altar and I'm gonna hand the mic over to the ladies here to minister to you. Just come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Come quickly, come quickly. So I need you to fix me, Lord Jesus, so I can radiate your glory properly. So the lens of my life doesn't contort your picture. Does that make sense? So I can reveal you as God to my family, my children, my husband, my church, my nation, so that what is coming out of me, that everybody's misunderstanding, can be fixed, but it's not that what's in me is wrong, it's that the lens of my life has been twisted, so that when you shine through me, pain adjusts it. Quickly, quickly, there's more of you, there's more of you. Offense, abuse, pain, fatherlessness, Betrayal by those you trust. Praise God. Pastor Ivan, will you help us pray? Pastor Joker. Praise God. Praise God.
I have prophesied many times directly and it has happened to many people. So it, I know it can happen. But today I'm not, I don't feel God said to do that. I feel God said you've been taught enough today to have a clear understanding of how to touch the throne room of God for yourself. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm stopping laying hand these days. I just speak the word. If you receive it, you receive it. If you don't receive it, tough. The wait and say the prophet was wrong. So I'm, I'm declaring over this that by, by this time next year, when we come back to God's girl. You know, this thing means so much to me that my, my, my mother-in-law died. And we should have gone somewhere. And I said to Namsa, I can't come on the Friday, but I came on the Saturday. Because it means so much to me. The family all went and gathered in London and do what they did. And I said, no, I'm committed to this thing. And actually, what date is it today? That's because she died in Jamaica on the 20th. It was the 21st year. And this is the anniversary of my mother-in-law's death, two years later. That's how much this means to me. So when I'm speaking into your life, I'm decreeing and declaring that God wants to do something about marriage in this place. But next year when I come back, I shall see, I shall see some rings waving. And whilst you're in that happy, happy mood, I'm going to take the offering because I forgot to take it earlier. Oh, you better flash the your left hand up and use your right hand to get in your purse. I'm going to ask you to do something which I saw happening in Nigeria. When I preached in Nigeria, I saw people run in a, in a couple thousand seats of church, run just to put money in the offering. There are envelopes if you want envelopes. Taxpayer. Taxpayers. We shall all be taxpayers, whether we own our own building or we have new jobs. So as soon as you find your purse, find your money, find your envelope, come quickly. And if you don't have anything to give, ask God to give you something to give. Praise God. Praise God. Nobody has anything to give today? Look, I know you're signing envelopes. Large checks are acceptable, little checks are acceptable. You can't give what you don't have. So as you come and decreed over your life that God will give you more. There will be increase from this day forward. There will be increase. And if you don't have any money to give, get up and touch the basket. Don't let the devil tell you that you are bound in the place you are. Get up and just touch the basket and decree over your life that from this day forward you will never be broke again. You will never be broke again in the name of Jesus. You will never be broke again in the name of Jesus. You will never be broke again in the name of Jesus. Cattle of a thousand hills are his. The gold's his. The silver is his. And just stretch forth your hand to your basket. You're, straight, you're blessing your own, thing, your own money. And God said to me before I leave home, that is there somebody that had a bereavement this year? Is there a lady here that has had a bereavement this year? Nobody? Is there anybody that had a bereavement this year? Oh, you got your hand up? No one? But if you have, come, 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 come. Because God said to give you something. I carried it from home. Babe. Anybody else? Anybody else? He also told me there was somebody that was coming that says, I can't make, I can't go on like this anymore. Is there somebody that said that? over this last two weeks, three weeks, that I can't go on. He said to bring your present. God bless you. Welcome. Come quickly. I hope I have enough now. If not, I'm going to just have to give you myself. I give myself away. 
so you can use me. This is this is for you, girl. I want you to open it. Then open it. You'll never look so good again. And my darling, I will promise you your gift because I I, I had to wear it. <laughs> I had a lovely scarf and I had to wear it. I, did, I needed something and I took it out of the bag. In fact, I didn't even wear it, but I, it's not in the bag. But reminds me, but give your name to Namsa and let me send it to you, please, babes. That's just a token from God to say that he hears your prayers. And if you have got a gift, you've got the gift of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Concludes God's Girls Women on a Mission 2015 in the Latin. Amen. Praise God. Um, before we go, um, please just take your seats, please. Those that are just leaving. Uh, can I just invite the God's Girls team to come and stand? Some of you don't know the people I work with, and um, just want you to see the is it the backbones behind my amen. And um, I'll also do this, you know, he'll beat me when we get home, but not physically, but yeah. Um, my husband, <laughs> I'd like to invite my husband to come to the front, please. If not for him, saying yes, he will not be here. Amen. One thing I learned about submission that, you know what, just, um, yeah, just submit. <laughs> so, all of you, be nice to him. Amen. So that he can allow us to have God's girls again. Praise yeah. God. This is my dear husband. Amen. You should be a person you just said. Amen. Um, such a humble man. I mean, people are saying he's at the back, but I actually think this is the back door. So I'm the one who's at the back. He's at the front door. So that's the front. Amen. So he's not at the back. He's actually at the front. He's everything that is happening since yesterday and today is because of how he leads. Amen. So I just want to appreciate you and ask everyone to help me appreciate you. Amen. For being such a great, great, great